If there's anything we know how to do here in Wisconsin, it's how to craft a great beverage. So let's raise a glass as we take a look behind the scenes of some of the best craft beverages Wisconsin has to offer. Hello and welcome to Discover Wisconsin. This is an anthem For those who look for more And never say they've seen it all From beer to wine and even distilled spirits, we love our beverages here in Wisconsin. So much goes into the drink that ends up in your hand. And the spots we're visiting in La Crosse County, the Stevens Point area, and the Muscoutin Valley are sure to give you a new appreciation for these traditional drinks. First, we're heading to the County of La Crosse at Lost Island Wine and Skeleton Crew Brew in Onalaska. So this is a winery and brewery in one. Yes, actually, uh, you know, originally we started out as a winery, had guests that would come in and say, this place would be great, it's so cozy that if you had beer, my husband, dad, brother, or uncle, whatever would love it. And then two years ago, we added the brewery to encapsulate that entire experience. So all the production is done right here on site? Yes, that is correct. As a matter of fact, uh, we're in the middle of a, a full day of winery production. If you want to step back with me, I can show you how all that operates. I have a feeling you're going to put me to work. I uh, actually <laughs> have plans for you. Are you're, you understaffed right now? We are understaffed <laughs> and we need help at the bottle rinsing station, labeler, Stelvin capper. All you right. are, will have let's, plenty to let's learn. Let's do it. Let's all do right, it. Here we go. As a small tropical winery and brewery that's family owned, it's a great spot to start your craft travels. With over 40 different varieties of wine and craft brews to try, visitors will want to get lost in tasting all they have to offer. Craft can, can take on any flavor. You know, most uh, wineries have a little more formal presence, but not quite, you know, what I would call California presentation, where we want people to feel relaxed, come in and enjoy, and don't feel like you're doing your wine tasting incorrectly. At the end of the day, customers like you come in and we get to chat, find out where you're from, you know, learn a little bit about you. And that's what I really enjoy is getting behind the bar and having people enjoy the products that we make. Grain grown by Wisconsin farmers is turned into spirits at La Crosse Distilling, which opened up in downtown La Crosse in the summer of 2018. Producing handcrafted field-to-glass spirits such as gin, vodka, and whiskey, this distillery makes tasty craft cocktails you can't get anywhere else. Head to discoverwisconsin.com to learn more about what Lost Island Wine and La Crosse Distilling have to offer. When we come back, we'll continue to take a sip of this city's crafts at another downtown location, while Eric taps a keg at one of the oldest establishments in La Crosse. Discover Wisconsin is back in La Crosse County, getting a taste of everything its craft scene has to offer. Just down the street is another favorite, Turtle Stack Brewery. When I started brewing, it was just a creative outlet for my scientific interests. That's really how I define craft, is it's a mix of art and science. You have the art of creating a recipe, and then you have the science, the chemistry, and microbiology that goes into making sure that all those ingredients that you throw together in a batch of beer turn into the flavors that you want in the pint glass. That's what I'm trying to provide to people who come to the brewery or try our beers. Give them a chance to experience a well-crafted beer and then have the opportunity to get a little bit of education about the ingredients that go into it. 
Our final stop here in La Crosse County is the one with the most history, Pearl Street Brewery. First, we make a mash of mm -hmm. grist, which is the word for milled grain. So we make the grist into this tank and we combine it with water at a certain temperature, a certain pH, and then it rests in here and some starch conversion happens. And that's basically the first step of the brewing process. It's called uh, loadering. And all these beers are brewed through this brewery. They're aged in tanks and then sometimes in barrels. Correct, yeah. Can we take a look at some of those barrels? You bet. Excellent. These are mixed fermentation beers in wine barrels. Mixed fermentation beers like these have found a rebirth in today's beer drinkers. Now, we're specifically putting those bacteria into beer that create the sourness, and the result is we can control the, the tartness and the drinkability of the beer. Starting back in 1999 in a small subterranean brew house on Pearl Street, this brewery has since expanded to the old La Crosse Boot Factory, and now their craft brews can be found all around the Midwest. What makes your beers unique? What allows you to be so creative with these? Well, uh, creativity is, is part of the process, and it's almost like, you know, we look at this as creating liquid art, except for there's not just one artist. This is a collaborative effort, and, and we've gone from uh, just one employee, myself, to, to over 20 employees, and everybody gets to have a little bit of input in the beers, whether it's the guy bottling the beer or brewing the beer, or choosing the ingredients or designing the recipe. Everybody gets excited when we're developing new beers because they get to be part of the Pearl Street Brewery legacy. From one craft beverage hub to the next, we're heading to the Rippin area, where our trek along the Miskouten Valley Craft Beverage Trail starts right here at Vines and Rush's Winery. What is it about Vines and Brushes that you think is bringing all these people in the second you open every day? We are a very locally focused winery, so we use 100% Wisconsin grown product. You can come in here, you can learn about wine, you can learn about our wine, you can enjoy wood-fired brick oven pizza, you can enjoy live music. We have Knuth Brewing Company beer on tap from downtown Ripon. So it's that experience, that combination of things that people really enjoy. I love that you say it's non-condescending. I find that to be kind of a theme of Wisconsin wineries. People want to come here and have a good time. Time, meet the people behind the winery and have some good drinks. Absolutely. Right? Wine brings people together and it, and it builds those relationships and it kind of keeps people talking and keeps them enjoying a product. Oftentimes that's together and that's what's most important. Totally. But it's not just about wine in the Ripon area. Artisan Distillation has found a new home in northeastern Wisconsin at the Hendricks Family Distillery. This family-owned and operated distillery produces hand-crafted bottles of potato vodka in small batches. We are completely family designed, built, and owned. And the, the four of us, along with our grandkids and family, we do everything in here, which I am very proud of. The system that we designed and the family built was a continuous fraction distillation system. This type of distillation is a lot nicer because you have a lot more control of the flavor profile and all, you know, extracting the different impure alcohols. And separates us a little bit is that we're able to do it you know, all in-house. We're able to design something specific for the highest quality possible. Want to get a taste of these craft beverages for yourself? Download a free itinerary at discoverwisconsin.com. We continue coasting down the Miskouten Valley Trail and Eric heads back to school after the break. We're back in the Muscoutin Valley, digging into the area's craft beverages one glass at a time. I'd heard a lot about Rushford Meadery and Winery, but the venue was unlike anything I'd ever seen before. Established in an old 1962 schoolhouse, this unique place encompasses six classrooms and produces mead, wine, and cider from their local vineyard, orchard, and on-site beehives. This is mead that was that's produced here. Yes, this is a traditional mead, which is honey, water, and yeast, and it's wildflower honey from mm. Winnicott, Wisconsin. That's a drier one. 
Yeah, there's not a lot of meaderies that make dry mead. Uh, they're a little difficult to make. So mead and wine, you produce both here. What's the difference in how they're produced? Uh, wine is made with fruit and mead is made with honey. And mead is one of the oldest craft beverages known to man, right? To my knowledge, it's the oldest. Theory goes, they left a bowl of honey sitting out and it rained and the microflora got a hold of it and created an alcoholic drink. You can see and hear the CO2 as it uh, escapes the must. Totally fizzing. Wow. So this is all honey, water, and yeast. That's it right now. Degassing. Yep. Eventually, uh, this will be married up with uh, some nice strawberries. Mm. Only handcrafted artisan beers are made here at the Knuth Brewery in the downtown area of Ripon, brewed in very small batches to ensure quality. Along with their beer, they also brew their own coffee and serve wood-fired pizza here at our last stop in the Muscoutin Valley. We're creating with our own hands from scratch. Uh, that's why our tagline is handcrafted artisan beer. My passion for beer uh, really starts with just using good, fresh ingredients, clean process, trying to, trying to make good, easy drinking, clean beer that everybody can enjoy. Jumping from one major brew town to the next, let's head north to the Stevens Point area for our first look at the Central Wisconsin Craft Collective. No two breweries are even close to alike. Even your big breweries, they have a hard time duplicating their flavor in different breweries. Even though their equipment is very much the same, uh, the water profile is different, so it's, it's not easy to do. We can't talk about craft brews in the Stevens Point area without mentioning Point Brewery. Established in 1857, its list of craft beverages has continued to grow, including everything from beer to soda to hard cider. I've been brewing as a home brewer for 30 years. And I really like beer a lot. Obviously, you have to be to be in this position. We're brewing a stout today for the first time. That'll be uh, new, and that'll be introduced probably within 28 or 35 days. We rotate three brews uh, as we go through the day. So there's always three things going on. So there's a good chance of seeing a lot of different things. From big craft beer to small batch spirits, our next stop in the Stevens Point area is Great Northern Distilling right here in Plover. So you used your chemical engineering background to create all of this. Absolutely. I've always said that good distilling is just chemical engineering with really good taste. The whole point of distilling is you're separating alcohol from our fermented mash of either grains or potatoes. So what we're watching is the liquids and alcohol vapors going up and down and you can see it at various points of the process. And coming out of this is a base alcohol. Correct. Yeah, this is uh, a base alcohol that we make out of wheat and wheat malt that we make for the base of our gin as well as the base of our coffee liqueur. This is our Vanguard whiskey at cask strength, which is between about 112 and 115 proof, and has been in the barrel for about a year to a year and a quarter. This is pretty much all ingredients from then within about 150 mile radius. Absolutely. Distilled in this building. Correct. Aged in this building. Yes. Cheers. Cheers. Mm. So you notice the richness of the Vanguard whiskey still coming through, but yeah. with the nice backbone of that maple syrup, the bitters, and then that flamed orange peel just giving that nice, nice nose to it. That flamed orange peel, you hit that first and then the whiskey just comes yeah. in and smooths everything out. This is absolutely fantastic. So that's our take on mm -hmm. the Wisconsin Old Fashioned. That's a good take. Check out some behind the scenes photos from our shoots and be sure to share photos of your favorite drinks with us using the hashtag DiscoverWisconsin. Hey, don't go anywhere. I know I won't. There's plenty more to taste here in the Stevens Point area next on Discover Wisconsin. We are back in the Stevens Point area and we're not done drinking it up. This next spot is a young family-owned winery in downtown Stevens Point, Sunset Point Winery. Oftentimes we'll get together with friends and mix different flavor combinations, and that's how we wound up with our Red Dwarf, which is a Frontenac Gris, which is a local grape varietal. 
and then we put aronia berry in with it and it offers a really neat sweet tart flavor and that's the one we actually brought to the state fair in Wisconsin this last year. They've created a relaxing home away from home where you can come to enjoy their wine and see the process of their small batches made in their eight fermenters. All things considered, I love wine and I love showing my children how to own a family business. We've seen quite a few so far, but there's one more brewery we have to stop at here in the Stevens Point area, Central Waters. What started with just two friends investing in a hobby has expanded into a craft beer enterprise. They pride themselves on being one of the most environmentally sustainable breweries in the nation with quality beer all year round, but especially tasty seasonal drafts. You'll want to check out this brewery for yourself. What has it kind of taken for you to make sure that every one of those flavors you put out is just top notch? It's not easy to do. Not every person thinks the same thing about it, right? right? Because some people just might not like a particular style or our interpretation of that particular style. So it's a tough balancing act. What we try to do is make a beer for every person. So we have things from really easy drinking products to really big, bold products. You really have to have this commitment to quality. We spend a lot of money and a lot of time making sure that our quality is where it needs to be. I'm gonna pour you a 20. This okay. is our anniversary beer from our party last January. It's an Imperial Stout, aged for two years in bourbon barrels. It's a tremendous thing. All right. It's safe to say I've never had anything like this. No, this is the type of beer that sort of changes people's perception about what beer can be. Yeah, totally. Right? Completely, completely blows it away. Yeah. I hear there's a tourism takeover event tonight in Stevens Point. I'm starting off my beer drinking a little early today, <laughs> but I know that they're gonna have even more beers for me to try there at Tourism Takeover, and a little more of the beer. Some wine, some spirits. We're gonna have fun tonight. <laughs> this is where the Central Wisconsin Craft Collective comes together. We had such a blast today sampling beers. We can't wait to see some of the fun tonight. Yeah, I'm really impressed by the crowd. The fact that you guys are showing up here in semi-decent weather is a big testament. Let's show the rest of the Midwest how fun Stevens Point is. The craft beverage scene in Wisconsin is a bustling one without a doubt. And I think one of the most interesting parts of its scene is diversity of the nano and microbreweries and all of the wineries. Some of them are newer and on their way up. Some of them have been a little bit more established, but all of them are there for the right reasons. They all started with a huge passion for crafting these great beverages. They're made locally right here in Wisconsin and they all just wanna make a really good product. Just as brewing can be a liquid art, so can crafting a good mead or making a good wine or crafting a good cider. And it really takes a lot of chemistry, it takes a lot of creativity, and it takes a lot of patience because it's a complex process. But when you do it right, when you find the right ways to do these things, you end up with a terrific product. And what you see and what you enjoy is grown sometimes in your own backyard. Discover Wisconsin is the state's leading media brand. Continue the adventure at discoverwisconsin.com and stream episodes on YouTube and Roku TV.